Well, if you need a case study in how clubs can crumble, Perth Glory were premiers in 2019. Last season, they came last. Roy O'Donovan, um, there were lots of mitigating factors, the quarantine, COVID, the travel, all that kind of thing. Um, we can make plenty of excuses, but still, it's a shame to see a club like Glory on the ropes, isn't it? It is a shame because you know, they've got a great history. They were the biggest you know, NSL club coming into the A-League at the start. They, they were one of the few clubs with some history. So yeah, last year was poured. They tried to do some things. I mean, Daniel Sturridge on paper this time last year sounded like a great idea to everybody. It uh, didn't work out like that, of, of course. But, uh, you know, they've, they've gone a different direction now. So there's been a lot of change at the club since last year. New manager, new head of recruitment and a whole new squad. Again, similar to Western Sydney Wanderers. Almost too much change, but maybe change that needed to happen. And there's a couple of players in there to stand out. Kolakowski, Matt Hatch. Players that have a point to prove, standing on their own two feet at, at a club where they're going to get game time. Um, Mark Beavers coming from Peterborough, good signing. Aaron McInef from Hearts. Johnny Catrumbus, David Williams, good signings, bit of experience. They'll be a lot better than they were last year, but the top six could be a stretch. Simon Hill, the gaffer, Ruben Zadkovic, appointed towards the end of last season when Richard Garcia was, was sacked. Ruben wasn't much fanfare around him at the time, and he has served an apprenticeship at, at MPL level, but I think he'll be rather more in the spotlight this year. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, obviously, last year, as you've alluded to, they had a lot of off-field problems with COVID in particular. Uh, so it was a tough baptism for him, really. But he's had time now to get his feet under the table. Uh, and he'll be judged like every other coach on, on results and, and whether his recruitment has worked or not. Uh, 14 players in, 12 players out. As Roy said, that's you know that's quite a turnover. And I agree with Roy. I think he's brought in a lot of good A-League experience. Um, you can include Mustafa Amini. I don't think you, you mentioned there. Luke Ivanovic he's brought in. Um, good overseas experience. Ryan Williams. Uh, ben Azubel. I don't know a lot about him, but he could be Barisha, he could be Mario Jardel, who knows? Um, you know, last year he was playing in the second division in Israel, so you think, mm, okay, but, you know, these, these things can sometimes work. The good thing, I think, about what Ruben's done, or the club have done, is that even though he's in an inexperienced coach, they put plenty of experience and wisdom around him. So in his backroom team, he's got Chris Coyne, Kenny Lowe, Andy Keogh, and Mitch Davre. Now, there's two former glory coaches in there. Mitch Davro, of course, the legend who won two NSL titles in uh, the, the previous era. So he's got a lot of experience on which to lean upon, uh, you know, if things get tough. And they may well get tough um, because there will be a betting in period for a lot of these new players. And of course, as we understand, there might be some issues with the home ground as well with HBF Park uh, being out of commission. Uh, to refurbish for the Women's World Cup. So it's it's going to be difficult for them, um, but I, I expect at least improvements this season. I don't think they will win, if that's the right word, the wooden spoon. Roy, yeah, Simon's talking about experience off the field. They have experience on the field in, in Mustafa Ramini. Slightly surprising that he went to Sydney FC on loan, didn't play that much. He was often on the bench for uh, making his way back to fitness Undoubtedly, but he is a player with influence. He is a, can be a leader on the pitch. How important is he going to be for, for Glory, do you think? Yeah, very important. And look, it's good for him. I mean, he, he's shown his hunger that he's travelling across the country here to, to make a right go of it again in the A-League, which is terrific. He's moving himself. He's moving his family. That's a big step, really, stepping away from, from the football pitch and, and doing that with your life. Uh, so I, I think he'd be good this year for them. I think uh, he's got a lot to offer. Soccero, of course. Um Bruno Fornaroli in your team is always going to give you goals. It's always going to give you excitement. So that's a, a great kind of spine of a team, almost a lead. And we talked on Beavers already as well, who I think is a great signing, and, and McAniff. So, um, yeah, look, I think they'll be solid. As you said, they've got experience off the field. They'll have a bit of experience on the field. Uh, they're relying on a lot of youth as well, as we've seen from their their, their team lineup. But, um, yeah, look, I hope Amini can turn back the clock and show what he's all about because, yeah, last year... He was a bit uh, a bit flat at Sydney FC. We didn't really he didn't really hit the heights. Roy, I wanted to ask you about those youngsters. They they made it a policy, I think, last year to go with a lot of young Western Australian talent to give the club that identity. Yeah. I particularly like Giordano Colley. I think he's he's got a fair bit of potential. I like Kieran Bramwell as well. Yeah. 
Um, and there's a, there's a clutch of players there that have a lot of potential. Personally, I'm surprised they let Daniel Steins go because I was a big fan of his as well. But out of those kids, who, who do you see as the one that's maybe going to step up and excite us this yeah, season? Yeah, well, I agree with you. Bram, Bramwell and Collie, really good. I actually watched Collie against Newcastle Jets. Now, Newcastle Jets on the day won 5 or 6 nil. It was like Perth Glory's U team. But I did see something in him. He's got a bit of spark about him. He was throwing he's got personality. He's got he? personality. Yeah. He was lucky not to be sent off after ten minutes, if you remember the game. But he puts himself around. You know, he's quick. He makes good runs forward. No, they were under the cosh a lot in that game. But you know, you can see he's ha- he has that little bit of quality, that little bit of excitement that the fans will will appreciate. Um, and yeah, as you said, he plays with, with personality, which is which is a rare commodity these days. You know, the world we live in. But um, yeah, he excites me. And if he can work with the likes of Fornaroli this year and Amini with all their experience and qualities, he'll do great. 